Hello everybody and welcome back to my workshop uh, for this the uh, I think the ninth part of the copy attachment um, it's been a while since I've uh, posted a video but I haven't been uh, entirely sitting on my backside I have been making one or two alterations and giving a bit of thought as to uh, how the thing's going to work uh, I probably should have applied myself more to that problem uh, before I started but there we go that's how things are progressing I'll take you over to the workbench and uh, we can see what I've been up to so here we are then over at the workbench some things haven't changed a great deal if at all um, I've made a few alterations to the end plates notably that I've made one adjusting screw here and a fixed screw um, or point rather there and uh, reversed it on the other end so that I've got a fixed point here and uh, the adjustable one is at the bottom uh, that enables me to fit the um, template holder uh, which if you recall I um, send, put some centers in here and that will allow me to um, uh, hold it securely between the two plates uh, I've also started making a couple of cutouts with the um, Shepoko CNC router in 4mm uh, aluminium I've just roughly cleaned that one up that is for to make a shape of a, um, um, a, a machine handle uh, this is obviously half of it and I've also made a tool setter this one is fresh off the um, CNC cut and I've still got to clean up the edges what happens is uh, once the attachment is mounted on the machine um, I fit that to the template holder uh, and this edge here is 6mm from that edge when that uh, the uh, roller or the pointer whatever runs up against the edge of the um, this template I know that that is 6mm from from the um, this edge of the template holder which represents the uh, centre line of the lathe the tool post is then mount, is mounted on the top here of course with the little tool sticking out and I bring that up to the template and there is a 6 or rather 12 mil diameter ro um, reference rod held in the chuck and the tool is brought up uh, uh, is adjusted such that the tool um, rests on the uh, outer extremity of that uh, 12 mil diameter rod right and uh, I also made this here screw here which bears on the end of the base so that if we start off say cutting I don't know this for example screw it out until the roller just touches the end then screw it in so that it will take a little cut as the carriage travels down it will ride that crest and cut um, on a suitably sized piece of um, stock that shape gradually winding the this slide in will take progressively deeper and deeper cuts now I'm not I I'm not sure, in fact I'm pretty darn sure that when I get down here and I'm taking a 
cut across for, uh, I will have to move the carriage by hand but that will come to light uh, as and when I use it right now I think I'll go over to the lathe and uh, set it all up and uh, we can have a, a real play perhaps here we are then over at the lathe I've uh, mounted the majority of the copy uh, attachment on the lathe bed all I've done is uh, mounted the end brackets um, put a square across the bed made sure that they're square to the bed both ends and uh, you may recall that there I uh, highlighted a interaction of the um, steady bar with the cross slide um, in, in use I have found that it is not actually necessary um, to have the steady bar in position these brackets once bolted down tight um, are sufficiently steady and not to need the uh, addition of the, the bar so now that that's all mounted and the um, template bar is in position with the center line setting piece on there I'll try and zoom in on that a little for you um, I'll remove the uh, steady bar I think it's probably a little on the tight side to do by hand but uh, I'll see to that later I've now got to remove the uh, uh, top slide, the tool post and uh, the, the bolt through the two post, posts which means dismantling the top slide and then uh, we can go about putting the, the copy attachment gubbins on top of the cross slide. Some days later, because I had to wait for some uh, aluminium stock to come uh, my post, and uh, I've set the copy attachment up so that the ball, when resting on the edge of the template holder, which represents the uh, center line of the template, and I've chosen to use this uh, circular cutting tool. The edge of that is in the center of the workpiece. You, it uh, doesn't show very well because of the parallax uh, error on here, but this is on the center line. That was set up with the uh, little template that I had mounted previously. And, uh, whoops, I'm now going to try taking a cut. And I'll reposition the camera so uh, hopefully it won't clonk into the cross feed. Right, well, fingers crossed, chaps and chapesses. Uh, I've chosen to go left to right uh, with the feed uh, simply because of the shape of the uh, template. So here we go. Let's uh, find out what I've done wrong. Right, engaging the lead screw now. We're clear of the template there. And it's set up such that it should start cutting about here on the template and then go around the corner a little way. I'll then uh, move the carriage back and start again. I've got it on a very slow speed rate at the moment. I think perhaps I'll speed that up. So while it's not cutting, I'll switch that off. And uh, increase the feed to 0.2 millimetres per rev. to increase the speed of the uh, 
doing about 3.20 RPM now because of the large stick out this is only aluminium um, I've uh, deliberately kept the feed water cutting the depth of cut low so as to restrict the deflection here we are, it's coming up should start cutting any second successful wasn't it I'll change the feed I'll try going back the other way See me take a cut the full length. What I do now is to pull back against the spring pressure, wind the carriage back to the start, release the adjusting screw on the end. Oh, oh, oh I got that in shot. Um, oh, and it's right under that. There you go, it's uh, this screw here. Unscrew that a little so that it um, puts on a little cut on onto the end of the workpiece. Sorry about the wibbly wobbly camera. And then it screams a bit as I Engage the uh, 
across to all the cross slide things. It's still not hitting the um, template there, so it's taking off a fixed depth cut. And because it's such a large stick out and unsupported this end, the finish is not very good. So for the last few cuts I'll put the tail stop support in and see whether that improves it. Should do. And that's the maximum dimension. And the going slope. Against the screen. Wind back to the start. Another half a turn. Rinse and repeat. you uh, sit through any more of this I'll bring you back when it's uh, just about completed Well, I've been chewing away at this bit of aluminium for uh, some minutes uh, and as you can see it's uh, gradually taking on the shape of the template however it's not going to finish up this bit here um, because I realized that I've made the radius of the template with the bit which you can't see here I've made that a radius of 10 millimeters from the edge of the template holder and uh, this stock is 16 millimeters diameter so I'm falling a bit short here 
however um, with a little bit of settling I will be able to uh, polish this up chop off the end and uh, tidy it up into a half decent uh, handle not that I can think of any use for it at the moment but there we go at least I'll have made the start on a portable uh, portable what I don't know because I've only will have made the handle however uh, I have found that these springs aren't uh, sufficiently strong to give me enough uh, oomph from the depth of cut and I'm having to physically push the uh, the slide towards and into the work um, and I'm just going to take a finishing pass now um, it won't actually start cutting until we get up to about there and then it'll start juddering on this end right. And uh, there we are, I think that'll do. Um, I think I'm going to call that uh, an end to this little series. Um, it obviously needs a little bit of um, development work, shall we say, but uh, I think you get the idea. And uh, well, if you have been, thanks for watching. Um, I don't think there'll be another video for um, some while yet. Uh, well, it's just <coughs> excuse me. I just have to see. Anyway, if there is a next time, I'll catch you then. Bye now.